the decade of 1927 and 1937. Ten years between Steamboat Willie and Snow White revolutionized the film industry and the art of animation. Walt Disney wanted to tell feature stories, and that meant realism, uh, drawing humans in a realistic way, animating them that way. So then uh, he started up his whole schooling program and trained his artists. And through that training, the style really changed. When Frank and Ollie and uh, the other guys in their cohort, they were called the art school crowd, when they came to the studio, Mickey Mouse was about six, seven years old and was already an international star. Most of them came because they saw pictures being made at Disney's that emphasized personality and character, you know, and they wanted to work on that. My father in particular, that was why he came, that's what he wanted to work on. Most of the Nine Old Men really started around the time where they were gearing up for Snow White. So that meant they worked on some of the Silly Symphonies, Mickey Mouse Shorts, Donald Shorts, and so forth. But that really in itself proved a nice training ground for the feature stuff, you know, which needed greater drawing, greater animation, personality, and all that. And everybody thought that Walt was crazy, you know, doing this in feature length form. But Walt and these guys had confidence in that it could be done because Walt was so passionate about it, you know, calling the whole crew on the soundstage, telling the whole story, and these guys were sold that, that it could be done. The Nine Old Men all worked on Snow White in several capacities. Mark Davis was Grim Natwick's cleanup person. So he really helped with that fine line work on Snow White, making sure her face is consistent, you know. Because a character like that is so difficult to draw. You draw one eyelash, just a pencil with over, and she looks like E.T. I mean, you have to be so careful with realism like that. And Mark Davis being a master draftsman, he could do that. The Nine Old Men learned very quickly as they went along, and they really relied on those principles for the rest of their lives. As we all know now, Snow White was an incredible success. And the Nine Old Men had an inkling of this when they attended the Snow White premiere in Hollywood in December of 1937. All the big stars of the day were there along with the Nine Old Men. Frank Thomas would talk about how nervous they were in their rented tuxedos. Everyone at the studio had given their all to get Snow White onto the screen. Walt, as a way of thanking his employees, sent you know, copies of Film Daily around to his, his key employees with a memo thanking them. Walt sent this memo to Milt Call, one of the nine old men. He helped animate the woodland animals that befriend Snow White. One of the most amazing things about this is not only does it indicate what a great artist Milt was, but it puts the lie to the myth that Walt never gave credit to his artists. Here was the top guy taking time to send a magazine to one of the artists that worked on the film. When they worked on Snow White, all of these animators who would become the nine old men, they were in their 20s. My father, when he did this, groundbreaking scene of the dwarfs crying around Snow White. He was 24 years old. And they realized that they had created something entirely new. And Walt realized that there was so much that could be done, so much that could be explored in this new medium, and that he finally had a group of people that he could do, well, the sky was the limit. Reproductions of these historic items are included in the 2017 D23 Gold Member Gift. Walt Disney's Nine Old Men. Discover more about these wizards of animation at d23.com slash nineoldmen.